Hey everybody, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Today, we're gonna to be talking about ground circuits and how to troubleshoot them and how they work using this Honda CB350. This is part of our electrical troubleshooting series on how to figure out the electrical problems with your vintage Honda motorcycle. Stay tuned. So our emphasis in this video is understanding uh, ground circuits in your vintage Honda motorcycle. And the ground circuit's part of the, the bigger electrical system, but I like to use this analogy to kind of separate the ideas out because we have a couple different main subsystems that we're thinking about in the bike. Let's think of a sandwich. And everybody understands that a sandwich has two pieces of bread and a filling in the middle, right? <laughs> no, no filling, no sandwich, no bread, no sandwich. So the ground system is essentially like the bottom piece of bread in your sandwich. We're not worried about the filling yet and we're not worried about the top piece of bread yet. We'll get to those in other videos. But right now, we're just talking about the bottom piece of bread and understanding that as a concept so we can complete the sandwich. We have a fully charged battery in the frame. We have both the positive and negative terminals connected. Now ground focuses around the negative side of the battery. And what happens is our Terminals connected to the battery, and all that wire does is run down here to the frame and bolts between the frame and the motor. What essentially has happened now is the entire motorcycle that's metal, motor, frame, whatever, is now one giant extension of the negative battery terminal. Let's go to the bench and show you this in a little bit more simplified example so you get the concept. I'm gonna illustrate to you how simple the idea of ground is. Uh, I have a frying pan here, which is a big chunk of metal. This represents something like the frame of your motorcycle or the engine, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna connect this jumper to the negative side of the battery and connect that to the handle here on the frying pan. What, is, what has happened now is now the frying pan is one giant negative battery terminal. And to prove that, I'm gonna connect my test light to the positive side of the battery and I'm gonna to touch it there and we light up. So anything that's exposed metal here on the pan is all one giant negative terminal. The center of the pan is coated with a nonstick coating. Think of it like it's paint on the frame or corrosion on something. And if I touch the terminal, I'm not getting anything. If I scratch through that coating, if I had to scratch the paint or scratch through some you know, dirt, light ticks, kicks on, right? No. So keep that in mind. All this is, is one giant negative terminal, and as soon as I unhook it, it's dead. Now that you understand the concept of ground, let's look at it on the bike, and we're gonna see where we do have ground connection and where we don't have ground connection. I'm gonna do that by using my handy test light. If you haven't checked out our test light video, make sure you watch that to have a better understanding of how to use this tool. In this particular example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the alligator clip of my test light to the positive side of the battery. And so we're using the test light in kind of a reverse order that you would typically use for diagnostic. And the very first thing I'll do with the test light always is to test the test light. So I'm gonna to touch the negative side of the battery and my test light lights up. That says my test light's good and I have battery power. Great. Now we know the battery is connected to the motor and that motor is connected to the frame. Basically, almost everything that's metal on the bike is ground. Watch, that's ground. Crankcase, how about the, the exhaust pipe? It's ground, I got some rust there, but there it is. How about the carburetor? It's ground. What about the brake pedal? It's ground. These handlebars are ground. The mirror is ground. About the fender, it's ground. The fork leg, it's ground. How about the rear shock? Wait, no light, huh? Well, let's talk about that. Now the shock itself is actually rubber mounted. You know, it has a rubber bushing at the top here and it has a rubber bushing in the bottom of the shock. So therefore, the shock absorber, although it's metal, is isolated from the rest of the frame. 
Also, things like painted surfaces, just like the middle of the frying pan, are not gonna make contact. But if I have something, if I scratch away a little paint, we have contact. So remember, things like paint or corrosion can cause insulation. You know, but otherwise, we still have many things that are ground. So I hope that emphasizes the idea that once the negative terminal is connected to the frame, pretty much everything that's metal on the bike is one giant negative battery terminal. This is also why it's very important if you're gonna be removing a battery, the first thing you disconnect is the negative terminal because we've deactivated the entire metal terminal that is the bike. And when you're putting a battery in, it is the very last one you connect. There are a few nuanced details about how Honda configured some of the components on the bike in regard to the ground circuit. That brings us to our tail light. A tail light's a good example of what we're about to get into. That Honda actually used what I call a redundant ground circuit. So while we understand that the metal on the bike is ground, they also had extra wires in the harness specifically to connect to ground. So if we look at our tail light, well, you would think, well, that body should light up. Well, no, it's rubber mounted off the fender. It doesn't actually connect to things like this, right? No connection. That's because it's connected to the ground circuit in the wiring harness. Let's take a closer look at that. This right here is our bundle of wires that connect to kind of the tail light and return signal circuit. I'm gonna open these up here so you can see them a little better. And the one I wanna focus on is this one right here, this dark green wire coming out of the, uh, out of here and into here. But anytime we see this dark green wire in any of the Honda wiring harnesses, regardless of model, this is the ground circuit. We can even see that we have a couple black wires plugged in here with the little green uh, tails on the end to indicate those connect to ground. So this connection right here and this green wire is ground. Well, let's verify it. Got our test light. Here we are. Test light lights up. So these dark green wires are all throughout the Honda wiring harness. We're gonna show you some other spots in the bike where they are. The good news about them is there's a lot of them. Um, there's, you know, they are a little redundant. You might find some on your harness that are plugged into nothing. It just depends on how Honda wanted to configure the harnesses because there's lots of harness variations. The main thing to take away from this is, again, in addition to, you know, it's a metal that is the frame ground, that any of these dark green wires like this are part of the wire harness ground system as well. Again, they're all grounds. All grounds are equal, but they are built into the harness and there are multiple spots all throughout the bike. Uh, something else to understand with this this harness ground with these with these dark green wires is that they're actually bolted to the frame somewhere. So the harness has a single bolt somewhere that's hooked to the frame, it's, which is why these are able to ground. Uh, different bikes have them in different spots, so we're not going to be able to show you on this 350 here. But just understand that there is a spot with a with a uh, a bolt and a terminal that is connecting the dark green wires from the harness somewhere on the frame. Now, in contrast to the tail light, which had its own uh, wire connected to the harness from ground, a lot of the front turn signals are grounded through the body. Now, if you took one off, you'll see that there's a single wire coming out of it, and that single wire is for the positive side. We'll talk about that in a future video. But if I check it out with my test light, sure enough, I'm getting ground connection through the turn signal, through the stem, and even through the headlight bracket. Now this opens up something to ponder when we're thinking about ground circuits. Now while these pieces are metal here, technically this bracket is isolated from the fork because it has a rubber bushing up top and a rubber bushing in the bottom and it's connected to a plastic headlight bucket. So what gives? Really, where is the ground connection? If these pieces are isolated, why do I have a ground connection here? Well, let's look in the headlight bucket and we'll show you what's going on. Right here, we have our bolt coming through on the side of the bucket here. Our bucket is plastic, but what do we got? A green wire. As we said before, green wire 
equals ground. And we trace it, we have a couple of these like bundles here. Like there's one there. Uh, I believe there's another one there. We have a couple of them that are all again part of that redundant ground circuit into the harness there. That one's good, that's a green one there. Check that one out there, that's ground. So all of a sudden, we isolated a whole bunch of those dark green wires just up front here inside the headlight bucket that are all ground wires. It's all part of the same system. Now, while I understand this, this green wire here is hooked up to this terminal and I can test it there, let's say you're in a situation where you can't actually get to a terminal and you want to see one of the beauties of a test light is you can actually take that tip of the test light there and kind of poke, poke the wire and poke through the insulation a little bit until it makes contact without having to cut the wire. So there you go. Again, we have a good ground connection there without having to destroy the wire. Another interesting spot that has kind of a hidden ground connection is between the handlebars and the, the wiring harness. The handlebars are rubber mounted with an upper and lower bushing for vibration, but it also means they are not physically touching the upper triple tree and other parts of the ground system. So uh, this little jumper is here that connect the, the handlebar yoke, handlebars and switch boxes to the rest of the system. Without that little wire, a lot of the ground connections in the switch boxes will not work, so make sure it's not missing. Well, that summarizes up the idea and concept of ground, which is the you know, one of the slices of bread in our electrical sandwich here. We're gonna dive into the other slice of bread uh, in another video, which has to do with the positive side of the circuit. But for now, it's really important to understand the concept of ground. Uh, three takeaways from this video. One, when your negative terminal is connected to your battery and it's charged up, ground is everywhere, right? And so the whole system is live and ready to go because it's all one giant negative terminal. Two, all grounds are equal, whether it's to the engine or the frame or in the uh, wire harness with those dark green wires, all grounds are the same. There's no difference between them. And three, when you have your positive side, your battery hooked up as well, the battery is charged and your ground is also hooked up, the system is live. That means that if you were doing something with the positive terminal and the ground is still connected and not disconnected uh, and you touched whether it was a part of the positive terminal system or the positive terminal the battery touches the frame, let's say you're taking the bolt out here and you slip and touch the frame, you're gonna get sparks because you've completed a circuit and you actually made a short circuit and that's not a good thing. So uh, again, your negative terminal is your master disconnect. It is the last one to connect when putting the battery in and it is the first one to disconnect when you are taking the battery out or doing any kind of electrical work on the bike. That isn't just diagnostic work. I hope you understand a little bit more about the electrical system in your vintage Honda bike, especially you know, the, the ground system there and why it's an important piece of this electrical puzzle. With that, we got some more videos coming out that talk about other pieces of the system, so stay tuned for those. And the best way to do that is to you know, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our newsletter via the website and, of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. Don't forget to ring the bell for future, not future notifications. Uh, as always, this is Brendan with Common Motor common-mutter.com on the internet, and we'll see you next time.